well, here here would be a big problem, right? Mm -hmm. Taiwan. Like if if we impose the kind of sanctions that we've imposed on Russia, if if China decides to invade Taiwan and the world stands up and the world imposes sanctions on China, how does that go? Uh, very ugly for the Chinese. So you know, say what you will about the Russian economy; it's corrupt, it's inefficient, it's not very high value add, but it's a massive producer and exporter of food and energy. You put the sanctions that are on the Russians on Beijing. And you get a deindustrialization collapse and a famine that kills 500 million people in under a year. And the Chinese know this. They can only push so hard. There's been a lot of talk recently with everything that's going on in Afghanistan about the United States not having Taiwan's back and all that good stuff. Uh, I really think that's overlooking a lot of problems that Beijing has in theoretically taking the island. Problems that aren't going to go away anytime soon and are the primary reason that Beijing hasn't taken the island for the last 40 years. Uh, first of all, let's say they win and they get control of that massive semiconductor industry that everybody's all concerned about. Well, the design for almost all the chips that are made in Taiwan come from the United States. So the idea that the U.S. would continue to supply the intellectual property to make that happen is kind of silly. Uh, second, the Taiwanese, the high-skilled, freedom-loving Taiwanese that make those chips, yeah, you can't do that with indentured servitude. So sure, the Chinese could theoretically seize control of the industrial plant, but then it would just be a giant paperweight. Second, uh, the idea that the Taiwanese would be alone is kind of silly. Uh, you'd probably have Japanese and American aircraft carriers to the east of the island able to run as many sorties as they want. So the Chinese are basically going to be sailing into a blender. Uh, third, the Taiwanese are no joke. Sure, there's only about 25 million of them, but it really doesn't matter because if the Chinese mobilize so that the Taiwanese know it's coming, give them a week or two and they can develop some crude nuclear devices. Taiwan's an advanced power. It has its own nuclear power system. It would not be a technical challenge. So if the Chinese go by a normal military process, they probably lose Shanghai and Fujian and there is even right risk to Beijing. So they'd have to do it from a cold start and then just throw people in the hundreds of thousands into fishing boats and do a mass sailing across. You're talking about casualties at least in the hundreds of thousands. So the military consequences for doing this are huge. And then again, let's assume that they win. Well, then what? The Chinese economy is completely dependent upon the import of raw materials, especially energy, and the export of finished goods as part of a supply chain to the wider world. A war would destroy the supply chain and it would easily uh, break up any sort of access they have to resources the world over. So you're talking about 70 to 80 percent of their oil inputs suddenly becoming unavailable. All the United States or uh, Japan or Vietnam or India would need to do is have a few destroyers in either the south part of the South China Sea or the Indian Ocean and all the energy flows from the Persian Gulf are done. So from an economic and strategic point of view, an invasion of Taiwan is national suicide for the Chinese. Does that mean I think it's impossible? No. If you have been following my work, the Chinese are facing a simultaneous demographic collapse, financial crisis.